I ask Adrian Ruse, Dutch landscape architect, studied in Wageningen University, where he teaches landscape architecture. He was founder and director of WestAid Urban Design and Landscape Architecture firm in Rotterdam and New York. He gained, his work gained international recognition by several projects like Madrid Rio, Toronto Waterfront, Jubilee Gardens in London, and the uh, Governor's Island in New York. He will speak about narrative of a stolen paradise, which is the theme of his essay in Topos. And just then after, I will ask the three, uh, Paula and Georges Decam and Adrian, to join the panel for a discussion. Yeah, thank you for your introduction while preparing. I think it is a great uh, topus at the end of the day. I like it. No? Don't take it for granted. Hmm. Robert did a good job. Um, I'm standing here um, uh, a little bit nervous. Um, this is very, narrative is a very light subject. It's not a heavy subject, but my head is heavy. So I woke up too early flying. Yesterday I was in a city council fight. Nobody liked us. That is very normal condition, but I still, and I only one coffee, so my head is so heavy and the subject is so light. That's the problem. Um, in a certain way, uh, and it's very relevant uh, as, a, as a practitioner, uh, I'm completely convinced, I'm almost shameless in this, that it's only narrative. The rest is, n the rest is like, it's a little engineering, you need to, to uh, develop skills as a landscape architect. And don't talk too much about it. Because I mean, we, we have to be serious, we do our work properly, but then with that uh, baggage, with that anchor, uh, the, the, the work is narrative. And why narrative? And it's very relevant for me, uh, in, and maybe not a coincidence, I suddenly married, at the end of the day, uh, actress, an actress. And actresses are like uh, the best teachers in the world because they are part of the world of theater. And theater is about imperfection, what makes you tick, uh, why is it something horrible. They have, they please don't have control, that's what they don't like. They like alcohol beyond um, um, certain levels, they even, you know, whatever. Um, my wife explaining me that in, in the world of theater is very normal if in between two, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, two uh, 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 serious uh, phrases, they, they leave stage for two minutes and they even make love then. This happens, I'm serious. So in the world of architecture, everyone is very serious. So narrative is the only thing which matters. Now, when I was uh, uh, starting to be uh, thinking, uh, uh, maybe I want to be a landscape architect, it was very clear, and it is, it's, this is what I would like to introduce, preoccupation, that um, um, I was born from a Protestant uh, family, and in the Protestant world, the things are very clear and precise, and grew up in this country, and I thought from, from the beginning, you know, the Protestant uh, uh, description how the world uh, started is there, were, there was paradise and God literally kicked Adam and Eve out. They stole the apple, they didn't listen, and they had to uh, make their own paradises for the rest of their life. As a Dutch Protestant, this went in me like really and is sitting there for every second because as a Dutch you grew up, yeah, of course, nobody can live in the sea, we, but we were kicked out of paradise. We have to live under the sea level and make our own land. And uh, this is the result. Um, we, we like it, we hate it, uh, we have to live with it. And this kind of, but for me, this also went into a sort of strange amalgam. And it, it, it is very much, uh, this is the truth. I really, I cannot escape that uh, reality. So it is a narrative, it is a reality, it's one. You understand? And I, I can, this is how I'm wired. Um, as a part of my education, uh, of course, I grew up uh, uh, for a certain uh, serious years with my grandfather because my mom died. These things happen. My grandfather, he was a dike engineer and he lived in the middle of the Netherlands. He has under his responsibility 
like 40 miles of the River Rhine dike, which was there for a long time. Like if this dike breaks, it's the most northern part, then the area which is the Randstad will be underwater. So these dikes, they need very good management. I grew up with him for a certain period. And the bureaucracy of my grandfather was situated in a castle-like, what is called in Dutch a dike house. But this is, let's say, the water board authority uh, represented with a beautiful uh, vivo leo uh, says Peter Titus, uh, Tutus, which I was always explained by my daddy when I was young, means the lion is, um, uh, is on the dike and protecting, you know? The, the, so he made a sort of, and the lion, of course, was my grandfather. You understand? I come back to this. This is a narrative. My grandfather was in the crisis years of the 20s asked to be there, the, let's say, the highest person in bureaucracy because he, he originated from Zeeland. Zeeland is the area in Holland where flood is every year. And in his childhood, he was, uh, and this is a photograph of him, he was aware of a dike which completely disappeared in the skeld. The dike was gone, like a slide of the dike. These things happen. And he was, uh, so for him, Dyke was not like reading the books, but was in his body, was in his memory. Here, here he is building dikes in this area. When he was a young um, supervisor, um, uh, making dikes with train uh, technology, you see, this is how they did it. And then, and he was, uh, when they needed a new, uh, a new uh, chair, a new leader for that dike department, my grandfather uh, applied. And he was not only bringing this kind of incredible uh, legacy of Zeeland dike fighters, but he also he was a freak um, on uh, music and he uh, played Bach. And he thought, you know, and he, he also applied for being the organ player in the church, in the local church, which was two bonus points because if you are from Protestant blood and you enter a new society, a village society, and, the, and you immediately you know, he said, well, I want to be in that uh, church, I play, the, I play the, the, the music. So my grandfather, and this is actually where I sat many, many, many Sundays, uh, playing this organ with his feet, pedals. So m my grandfather's narrative is very simple, as mine was. It was God, Protestant God, of course you have to work hard for the money. The dike, the dike is like Zeeland concept, you cannot touch a dike, the dike is holy and Bach, and this thing, these things were one thing. So you see, landscape architecture from books makes sense, but it doesn't bring you anywhere. And uh, today, this par portion of the dike of the River Rhine is very famous because it's the only portion of the river dike in Holland which is unbuilt. So in my grandfather's 40-year legacy, he didn't allow anything to happen on the dike because uh, God, the dike, and Bach was this spiritual uh, sublime. So I even, I recently went to, to visit the site. I'm invited to give a lecture for this water board. And I uh, <coughs> figured out that what my father told was completely wrong. So the, 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 the phrase on the, on the dike house is uh, not that my grandfather is the lion who um, guides uh, or saves um, uh, the dike, but it's the other way around. It, it says, the grass saves the lion. That's what's saying there. The grass saves the lion, which means, and the grass, of course, the Dutch word grass is much nicer than the English word grass. It means that if the dike grass is good, the dike is in good condition, then the lion, which is Holland, it's the symbol of Holland, can sleep well. It's interesting. So this is the narrative story. I think in my profession, and I'm from the day when we started uh, in a sort of, I hate it, I love it, I hate it, I love it. Uh, there's always a sort of romance and there's sort of the engineering and, they, and there's so much confusion. And uh, I am very much aware of the, the of, let's say, the, the paradise uh, uh, um, uh, narrative. And, and I want to uh, focus on that. And first, and that's, let's say, I keep you, um, I keep, it, I keep it light uh, today, but I think it's, well, it's very essential, and this is also in, in my wife's influence. Uh, we are living in a world which is so, so stressful that you can hardly live. You, be, you better kill yourself immediately, every day. 
You know, things happen, it doesn't work, uh, you have no control, people are irresponsible, wars, you know, it is everywhere, even in your family, in your office, everywhere. And, um, and we have a perfect uh, talent as uh, homo sapiens to more or less formulate a sort of mindset, an exclusion of the fatal destiny. I'm very serious in this, it's sort of exercising uh, quality we have. So, um, you ignore, uh, you, um, you lie, um, you make it nicer than real, uh, you frame it in something so you can accept it, but it is still not acceptable, these kind of techniques, and we are very good in that. And that is exactly, um, I think, the, the long line in, uh, in dealing with landscape, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are on the planet and, uh, and life is very tough and uh, physical condition is not, uh, even with uh, technology, uh, um, it's not always controllable. So what I like about this is this. Imagine that we go back to the wilderness, that, uh, that primitive monkey, um, uh, uh, Homo sapiens, uh, was, uh, of course, uh, uh, capable to be a survivor because of the brain. It's more brain cells and all the, all the rest, but also was able to communicate. It's not only the fire and the tools, this is what they tell us always. But they sat around the fire and talked and communicate, they speculate. They were watching the, the, the animals and uh, try to interpret what they, why and where they w should come. So the, it was a very uh, interesting thing and, uh, and it is very clear and more recently it becomes more clear all the time that these primitive people living in the wilderness, they were dreamers, dancers, painters. They, they had all uh, this kind of, you know, to overcome the stress of wilderness, they could even uh, frame uh, reality differently. And that's very relaxing. So I think it's very essential to see these things, you know, the hand, the, the animal, the warrior, the girl, the virgin. Um, um, in the Stone Age and Neolithic, Neolithic uh, time, something changed because uh, a human, uh, humans became uh, living in settlements. They were no longer in the wilderness because they live in larger networks. And uh, to, uh, to escape reality or to, to fit themselves in the huge universe, they make all kinds of beacons and monuments related to death and life, to the, to the eclipse, to the moonrise, whatever, you know, and it's, and it's very uh, uh, interesting to learn that in, uh, in contemporary archaeology, for example, at Stonehenge, they figured out, they found people with DNA related to this area. So, they, they, you know, they didn't live in the wilderness, they lived for the first time in landscape, they traveled. There was a span, there was a reach, which is equal to us, to EU uh, uh, scale. I think it's very interesting to uh, see a sort of transformation from wilderness into landscape. These objects they made were very fundamental. Um, <clears throat> in the ancient time, so we go now back uh, um, Egypt, uh, Greece, Persia, it's very interesting that suddenly the, the garden emerged, the garden was there. There's evidence found in Egypt, there were, there were gardens uh, like fish pond, uh, ritualizing. Um, uh, the, the reflection and the, the bird and the, and the fish, um, uh, date palms, uh, feek, all that kind of things. Uh, what is very important, and uh, they also found uh, gardens for mummification herbs. So it, it started from a sort of primitive things, but nevertheless a sort of garden uh, suddenly was there. Uh, and uh, what is very uh, known about the ancient time, especially the Greek and the Romans were keen on that, they also created a sort of in an incredible, unprecedented parallel world of gods and, 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 and animals uh, to uh, understand, uh, to make life understandable and to escape uh, uh, the hardness of reality. Uh, in this, uh, of course, uh, we, we, we still use these, uh, these elements. What is very important, very, very, very important, and not often explained uh, on, let's say, on, on university to students, is that this is the time in Persia, for the first time, same era, in the, the ancient uh, civilization, gardens were uh, uh, situated near palaces. They, they have been found, these gardens, and uh, they were um, uh, what is known uh, through uh, poetry, uh, written in clay, uh, related to, uh, 
life, uh, death, uh, storytelling, uh, poetry, the, the, the poetry of the water, the cool breeze, and they were enclosed palace gardens. And this is an interesting uh, later medieval image. You could not enter these palaces. Nobody could ever see these uh, gardens. And, uh, and through that, a sort of storytelling, a narrative history started about the garden. And this is a Renaissance image about the Persian garden, which is situated as an ideal world uh, on the two rivers of uh, Mesopotamia, which is unwalled. And, um, um, and where uh, uh, Jewish culture, Christianity, and Muslim culture took away, because everyone talked about these kind of hidden gardens, the concept of paradise. So suddenly paradise came as a concept uh, in civilization, and paradise was the, literally the enclosed and walled garden. Uh, man was made out of, in Christian uh, tradition, out of clay, which is very logic, if you are made from clay, from Mesopotamia, why not? You cannot be made from rock then. And um, um, there is the, the tree of life and the, and the snake and the apple, and we, you know better the story. And, but it's very relevant that uh, Adam and Eve uh, 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 live in a world where it's always, because, and this is the narrative, the, the, the verb, the, the, the words about this Persian garden, they live in a world where it's always spring. There's always fruit, there's always fresh water. You cannot even age. If you're there, you stay who you are. So this is a fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic narrative of paradise. Um, is it clear? Okay. Um, I'm a designer, so it takes a, it's a little burden to start uh, reading history. Maybe others should do that. Um, nevertheless. In uh, 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 Islamic culture, uh, took the same uh, notion, added uh, uh, an, uh, an, a, a lot of other elements. Um, what is very intri intriguing in uh, Persia, which is the, the motherland of uh, garden plus poetry, they both they link. It's very fantastic that garden history actually never existed without poetry history. You know, they were one, like. Bach, the dike, and God is one. You can say, well, there's a dike, how do we solve the dike? No, it is, it is not a dike with Bach, God, and a dike. Then there is, a, there, then there is life. So it, these things are they, are, they are brought together. They form a unique uh, uh, concept, a unity. Of course, we divide these professions, but it's stupid. It shouldn't have never happened. So in uh, uh, a Persian, um, uh, concept and it's very interesting. There's a book, uh, let's say the 13th uh, century uh, 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 writers in Persia. The, uh, there's a, there are a lot of books still active, and they they are really uh, uh, people read them. They uh, reflect on what the morale of life is, how to solve problems, what are the standpoints, uh, how are we related to each other, to culture, to God, to life and death, etc. And these books. Uh, especially Sadi's uh, masterpiece, uh, The Rose Garden. More or less, they come from sitting in a garden, speculating and talking from a narrative tradition, and then some of the writers wrote it down in perfect uh, Persian, which is still uh, celebrated up to today. Even in America, there, there are professors specifically on this poetry. And as you might know, the, uh, the, this culture took um, although not originally designed by uh, is Islamic um, people, but uh, they took uh, Alhambra as a, this is a very interesting uh, thing. The notion of paradise as again as an walled space with, uh, with an algorith algorithmic perfection, with uh, the four rivers of life and the source of water, with the reflection of the water which, which, where you can see at night the, the moon and count the moons for uh, Ramadan. All these elements uh, of, of, of paradise were, were still uh, there in uh, medieval time. In the Christian uh, medieval tradition, there is a very uh, interesting, uh, and this is of course speculation, perception of uh, 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 paradise and the ideal world, because, uh, uh, you know, 14th century Europe, if you read about it, there was pestis, killed 50% of the Europeans. So between uh, Caucasus and Ireland, 50% of people died in, uh, in 40, 50 years. And uh, let's say uh, life was pretty tough. 
And uh, the, the no so they needed explanation of this kind of, because this is really like stressful uh, to survive, to keep smiling. You know, you cannot say nothing happens. Why bother? You know, you cannot do that. So you need a kind of framework. So hell and paradise were very much uh, within this speculation. Uh, and of course, this is Euronymous Boss, uh, um, uh, who was uh, in the, uh, let's say, the unconscious uh, world of the bad and the, the fire and the hell. But very relevant, the, the paradise was kept as a garden and closed with the tree of life, Adam and Eve, evolved into the same garden with the virgin. So Eve transformed in virgin, or Adam and Eve were out and the virgin was there. It is very interesting, and, uh, and as a Madonna, and of course the child also came. And in late uh, medieval time, representation of the ideal world of the paradise and closed garden was with the tree of life. And here we see uh, uh, Maria with a baby, uh, reading books, uh, picking fruits, uh, talking with angels, uh, nursing the ground. Oh, there's a whole atmosphere of, uh, um, let's say, a whole narrative, uh, rich narrative line. And songbirds are there, flowers are there, eternal spring, you don't age. It's very uh, harmonious, uh, but it's also education and, and you know, a, a reflection to a larger world. And this was the, cultivated in serenity, so like, uh, like the Protestants like that, but in those days, you know, serenity, it needed to be pure. The ideal uh, um, is very uh, almost non-Catholic, but this is very, um, very uh, interesting. And persons like uh, um, uh, Erasmus, is it a very late medieval time or early Renaissance, defined uh, the garden, Hortus Conclusus, as the place where you read about the world. So you sit in a garden, but you read about the world. So the garden is actually like a television. It is uh, watching a larger reality. And um, I will speed up here. Is it still okay or is it getting boring? <sighs> the, as always, the Italians, they stole paradise for themselves. So the, the rich people, the merchant, the aristocracy, they took this notion of paradise and uh, brought it in a sort of hedonistic concept. If you see the images, it's very much like the medieval uh, concept of enclosure, but put it in uh, topography, and you watch uh, a, land, uh, a landscape, the hills, you have a scenery, uh, water cascades down, and they brought this on a level which is unprecedented. So it is party, it is for uh, pleasure, it, and they introduced uh, uh, um, you know, also places to hang out, uh, 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 you know, the Latin culture uh, knows how to deal with, uh, with pleasure. So water became, uh, not water, but became like, you know, fountains, paradise, whatever. They took on board all of the classic allegoric uh, uh, things, the horses, you know, like the primitive uh, uh, hunter-gatherer, uh, the virgin, uh, everything, name it, it was all there on, on every level of uh, imagination. If you go to Villa d'Este or some of these other Renaissance gardens, you are amazed about the sexual layering, storytelling, or allegoric. I, I think the garden is a minor detail. If you see all the other things, it is like overwhelming and uh, rich. Grottos, uh, Hercules, there's Poseidons, there's fish. Look at this uh, woman. Um, I mean, this is, this is what, uh, what is very special. And uh, like... Um, the Renaissance and Baroque garden. In Dutch culture, in German culture, there's even a word which is called Lustgarten, of Lusthof, which is explaining Lust is related to sexual uh, desire and pleasure, or food pleasure, the, the two. I think it makes sense. So that is, that is where the Italians uh, brought it. In Rococo, it is very well known, uh, and on the court in Vienna, in Paris, um, the gardens became party, it was hedonistic beyond. But there was also, they invited uh, on the court a um, musician, there was opera, theater, dance, poetry, uh, day and night events, uh, festivals. So the garden became related like in, the, in, in Persia with, with not only poetry, but with many other layers of cultural um, 
explanation and uh, exploration. Okay, um, but this was for the this is for the happy few, of course. Um, uh, industrial time came uh, with, uh, and this is the first uh, killing machine, the guillotine. Uh, French philosophy, uh, German literature, uh, created a frame for the inevitable mental escape in a new world where industrial revolution created a sort of monster society. The Med Medusa raft might be seen, I always read it as a metaphor for, for example, Paris as a city where you cannot live, people uh, die, and, you know, it's hunger, starvation, it, it, it becomes a wilderness again. Um, and uh, in this uh, German and French uh, philosophy, there's suddenly a sort of new paradigm in which nature, um, uh, the sublime elements of nature, uh, 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 were there in uh, aesthetic, uh, esoteric harmony, uh, life and death, all these kind of things. Um, uh, very famous is uh, that uh, Goethe went to uh, Rome and to uh, Mount Vesuvius. He was um, he, he sniffed the the, the sulfur, uh, was intoxicated by by the by the by the by the moisture and the gases of Vesuvius, and was like uh, completely tripping uh, about uh, nature. And then he already had crossed the Alps, which was also wow. So. Th you know, these people uh, saw uh, the last pits of, uh, of wilderness. Of course, the engineers had to redesign the city, but uh, s very soon the European metropolis was needed a better recipe because it was not uh, uh, solvable without narrative. And they brought uh, the sublime um, uh, English examples of the new uh, paradigm in which uh, uh, har harmony, life and death, authenticity of nature and ru rural uh, society, the sover sovereign sovereign sovereignty of the individual uh, became uh, uh, a new uh, concept. And uh, strange enough, they took um, uh, Arcadian uh, um, references with ruins, but also with uh, mythology uh, and the Palladian um, kind of architecture. And this needed to be implemented in the cities to uh, give the antidote. Uh, I, I don't explain these things, but you have to appreciate how unbelievably deep and good this was. So don't take this for granted. This is super good. Like, wow, you can't match this level easily. And, uh, but this is also the, the, you know, the birth of the modern society where technology, um, uh, democracy, uh, health, uh, uh, mobility, uh, education, um, uh, you know, uh, production, they, uh, the, the, the accessibility of knowledge, uh, they, uh, it was upcoming. Um, and uh, and uh, while uh, the last pieces of wilderness were tamed, and uh, this is the Canadian School of Seven Painters, they, sub they made a sublime frame how to understand Canada for Canadians still in every school class, these images are there, and the tree. Uh, Europeans were trying to get what is this new uh, era and what is, what is uh, you know, we live in a modern time, but so we don't need uh, paradigms, we don't need narrative. So this is Gustav Klimt. I could have taken uh, Mondrian, but he is, uh, he looks like a uh, 19th century man, a beard, you know, he, 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 he the monk uh, outfit, painting reality, the forest and nature, abstracting this. In, uh, in trees, making the apple tree, the tree of life, suddenly in this, wow. So busy with still the, the very old, uh, the, the paradise, the songbird, the flower, uh, the tree of life, uh, and uh, we all know the result in this magnificent painting. Um, in architecture, the, the, let's say Picasso, uh, Stravinsky, all these modernists, they wanted to get rid of this nostalgia. But uh, they couldn't because they were, they were deeply, deeply rooted in a romantic era, as we are. And this is our problem. We are in two worlds. We cannot, we are schizophrenic. And, um, and uh, in architecture, they did a lot to uh, escape. So, for example, here, the Corby world in which uh, the horizon is only the landscape and the, 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 the landscape down to earth is, uh, is useless, uh, especially for Matthew. Um, uh, the concept of Broadacre City, in which suddenly in the 30s, suburbia was introduced, which is a cultivation of innocent and no problem on, uh, on a scaleless level. 
Um, uh, but then the problem was uh, getting more serious. After the Second World War, nobody could claim the 19th century uh, paradigm of romantic in relation to innocent, that people are so authentic and from every child there is blossoming an, an interesting identity and an ego will develop because people know, no, man is shit, they kill each other, there is Auschwitz. You cannot keep this in mind. So it was very complex. So the artists and, uh, and uh, architects right after the war were completely crazy. What can we do? So very interesting is the, the sublime is now statement about the New York artist groups uh, where uh, Barnard Newman was part of. And they claimed, you know, if we have to uh, survive in art and a representation of the ideal, we have to get rid of every European nostalgia, everything. The Greeks, the Romans, the Romantic era, forget it. It's, nothing is there. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't bring us anywhere. We have to reinvest uh, our energy into a sort of a new perception. And of course, they claim it as a sort of American way of doing, but that is not relevant for today. And he painted Adam and Eve. Again, Adam and Eve. I, don't, I, go, I would like to have a lecture only about these two paintings, but that doesn't happen today. It's interesting, no? So we have Klimt, we have the medieval time, uh, we have the Persian, so it is, and we, you know, we want to unpack, we want to get rid of our legacy, our narrative, and the stu stupid uh, paradise uh, metaphors. We are failing, we can hardly do that. So some architects uh, uh, like this one, uh, they, they found a very, very small pit of wilderness and bought it because their, their clients could own it. They, they could own the last waterfall, which is un, untamed and, and merged architecture with the wilderness. These were, there are of course, and we all appreciate the work so much, the, the sort of echoes of modernity in, uh, for example, Baragan, who made uh, this uh, garden near Guadalajara, where a ref reflection pond uh, mirrors the sky and you know, sort of the tree, they drop shade and silhouette. It is, well, we go back to Persia. This is medieval uh, concept or Louis Kahn, uh, you know, making this ultime uh, void. But where we are today is here. We live in uh, schizophrenia. Our, our profession is so successful. Commercially, we rule. But uh, mentally, uh, uh, we are bankrupt, you know. We are, and I feel this very uh, serious. We have to look for solutions. I don't, I don't have other ones than these paradise-related uh, uh, narratives. So as you see, this is shopping mall. Inside the shopping mall, you find advertisement, advertisements, stole every illusion of paradise from the history, shamelessly and better and very big. I once saw uh, in Russia, above uh, uh, the town center, Red Square, a billboard, which was six blocks long with a, with a, with a model. In a, in a perfect landscape. I mean, you, we are useless as architects, as, as designers, as painters, you know. The, 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 the ideal world, the narrative uh, uh, is in any uh, shopping mall, uh, in every media, and uh, well, it becomes complex. I, I stop here uh, with uh, two uh, observations, um, uh, and, uh, which I think uh, uh, for you is hopeful, I hope so. Uh, landscape architecture as today, and I'm a practitioner amongst many other practitioners, they use Photoshop techniques and they uh, always use the, 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 this old, old, old paradise without even knowing it. Because they create landscape which are always in spring, there's always girls, such a virgin, there's always a tree, a tree of life, songbirds, flowers, you won't age, there's only successful people, people don't die, there's no people with a failure, which is what my wife is only interested in. They, you are not recognizing these people on these artist impressions. So unconsciously, we, we paint these same, the same as always. We didn't make a step. It, the problem is it, 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 they do it in, unconscious. I am very much frustrated about it. Is that clear? Because if it's conscious, yet go for it. Cool. But unconscious, Come on, we need another symposium. And they, uh, and, they, and they make landscape and it is so friendly and so relaxed and brainless, but it is there. And, and, and after Barcelona uh, uh, won the Olympics and, uh, and uh, 
and the, Barcel the, the, the Catalan architects make all these plazas, everywhere in Denmark, in Scandinavia, in England, in America, in Germany, there is this uh, the Catalan, uh, you know, landscape, landscaping, landscaping. You understand what I mean? With, where do we go? Where does it go to? But it creates, again, this is so, the songbird, the flower, the, the innocent behavior, peace and harmony. I have no idea whether I would like to live here, not at all, but so there is a very, it, it is there. Why is it there? I'm, I, I need this symposium to answer these questions. And then on the other side, this is the, the same story, but then told differently. You know, God said, don't eat from the tree of life because I kick you out and you have to live in Holland under the sea level <laughs> and make your own paradise forever. <laughs> it's a very simple story, no? And now, we fly to America and Harvard, all these symposium. Our planet is dying. We eat the fruit of life. We kill the tree of life. And we need a system approach and we need to... Um, you know, to compensate and, and engineer new nature and this kind of, it's the same narrative, isn't it? I'm puzzled. So we are in a, in a sort of trap of this. So this city cannot extend forever. So planet Earth is limited. So we stole the tree. We, we touch the wisdom and we eat the apple. And we shouldn't do it, but on the scale of the, of the planet. So I think maybe I'm too Protestant. This is very fundamental. And, uh, and there we come as uh, system approach managers, because we're so well trained in the polytech, and we bring the water back to planet, and it percolates almost better than Rudolf Steiner could have fantasized back in Mother Nature. No? Anthroposophic, we, and the water is there, and marshes grow, and frog come back, and, uh, and the retention. And uh, you know, we understand the landscape as system, and we, we, we can deal with it. So, you know, this kind of, um, of course, we stole the tree, uh, we, st we eat the apple. I stop here. Um, this is, a, for example, I, last week I went to a wetland park in Hong Kong. I'm a, a little bit, uh, as, as, as you might understand, uh, preoccupied, culturally preoccupied with water management and these kind of things. And this was, it was an education uh, tool for people to explain the world of water. Now, I stop here. Um, this is um, Jerusalem, which is a city, which is the paradise for many uh, religions. And then the architecture uh, represents uh, the ego bigger than Jupiter, Calatrava, where, where nobody, not even Herzog de Moron, can build a, a, a building which is not representing or, or built from yellow sandstone, because Jerusalem cannot be owned by anything other. And Calatrava, at the, when you come from Tel Aviv or from the airport, you, you climb the mountain with a with highway and then you enter the city under Calatrava. Dang! Interesting. Other position is, is of course, Swiss. To make a, a pavilion with a double uh, black, black uh, uh, wood. Uh, tarmac uh, concept and to to collect uh, God's light on, on modern nature and to frame the Hortus conclusions. So we are very in very complex uh, world. Thank you for your attention. Well, Adrian, I think we're all asking, well, um, how do you cope with these questions uh, in your work? How we, can, can, can people hear? That, that's one question. And the other question was for Paolo. I was interested. Oh. The first question. Uh, how do you cope with these questions in your work, Adrian? And the second question was for Paolo. I'd be interested in the, the green cast, this concept, which I didn't really quite understand. Is it something molded or... Um, it's kind of an, also an artificial nature, or how does this concept? Yeah. So, so in my work, it is very simple. Um, I feel like um, you know, uh, relaxed because I am very well trained as an agricultural engineer. So, drop me in the jungle, and I will be able to understand 80% of the complexity of what I see there. So, this is in the back pocket. It's there. 
I'm not American, I don't gonna brand it, I don't name it uh, landscape urbanism or whatever, it's here. It's my anchor. And then uh, if, we, if we start project, we start with a poem. So one or two words, and, and if we find these, then we have a project. I, I could lecture, but this is not today. It's very simple. Y you really immediately understand the project if you, t if you have these words. This is a tool, of course, but it is very aut authentic and related to ourselves. Yeah, um, in fact, it's not, uh, it's not a concept that is original from, uh, from us. It was proposed to the teams to work on this idea of uh, green cast, couleur uh, verte, in fact. It's quite often used, but uh, the interpretation we gave of this uh, being, uh, being a cast, we, we, we were very much uh, on this idea of porosity that uh, is uh, a theme, is a concept on which we have worked uh, a lot together with Bernard in, in, the last, uh, in the last years. And um, it, it's important that in some cases this um, continuity is there, in other it has to be completely invented and uh, constructed. That's why this, the construction of soil and nature was, was a fundamental part of the, uh, of the work. Um, I don't know if, uh, Joshua, we can uh, continue a little bit with this uh, light polemic about the playground. <laughs> the <laughs> I don't know, Ma Matthew, if you like that we s s switch to the playground or is... Uh Actually, I was going to ask about the same thing, like taking advantage of uh, Adrian's presentation about garden and this discussion that already started last night about garden, park and playground. It would be great if you... <laughs> elaborate on that, but I was also going to say like, about the indeterminacy in your work, which I see very clearly with the river, but I think also it is a part of your work, maybe not with the nature, but also not only with the nature, but also with human activity. I would like to ask about where, do you, where is the cursor of this indeterminacy in the project, which is, I think, a bit against the idea of garden, at least as far as I know, the garden, like Persian garden, is really the idea of design, control, and plan. Like you plan everything, and even the borders with the context is very sharp, very determined, which is a bit not what happens in here. So I would like to ask an elaboration. Uh, écoutez, um, it was very inspiring, your uh, story, because of course, there is a narrative of landscape, uh, as uh, it was uh, just recalled by Adrien. The, the world is full of story and this story. Now, the problem, I, I mean, the distinction is, you say you start with a poem, a, a project, I understand. I start with, uh, yesterday I said, the designer, or architect has a lot of things in the head I hope what we can call it culture narrative uh, stories the, f the, the, the white page does not exist with a lot of things and we have to get rid of things and make choice the point I have is I don't use a narrative to build a project I, I work on memory or narrative uh, orchestra, as you said. I am full of, uh, my father was a libra, uh, bookseller. I ate bookseller, I ate, I, mean, I eat uh, <laughs> books from my childhood. And uh, for me there is a link between, uh, I agree completely with you, garden is a book. But now we have lost God. Me, I have lost God. Or the world. It does not mean that you are aggressive against the one who has still God. It's, this is a good question nowadays because you have not only Christians, but you have in your gardens Muslim people. And unfortunately, because there is like uh, integrity, 
say, we want to be like, and this bloody Muslim with a religion there. So you are becoming essentialist. We name the people because what they believe. So I am atheist, but, but I love the people who are not. I like him. They are in my paradise. We are different and the same. I think humanity is a unity. One man, be Pakistan and bloody Dutch, uh, horrible Swiss. Uh, we are all of the espèce humaine. We are part of the same. And this paradise idea for me, is, is it possible to, to build, I mean, like I said yesterday, I would like in my river project, so, Les Jardins de l'Air, be a, as you, 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 you show it, a place of reflection. Is it possible to make this today and uh, without a, a God, but we have a, uh, so this is my, uh, my problem of both the narration. I will never uh, like a project who tell me a story. It's b b very often it's very weak projects who are explaining, you know, this, uh, it's not far from the last uh, images in Hong Kong. Th these are storytellers. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, just a remark, that Picasso gets rid of everything. I mean, he said, these people they said, novelty is not forgetting the past. We can say that Picasso understood more than any reality painter the, real, the reality of the world. And he accepts, uh, with Carl Einstein, the uh, books, the what they call Negro sculpture, and they understand better. I mean, the what the African have done, and the, Picasso didn't get rid of uh, anything. He included everything. But the problem is, uh, as you said, we are faced every generation to digest everything, and to the tradition is a, is a suite des inventions, not, not the suite des copies. We have to invent our new, new, newness without forgetting the past. I think the best uh, writer for me is Walter Benjamin, who said, it's a collision of autrefois et maintenant. Di dialectic images, dialectic things are full of history and full of re re rejection, and we have to deal with this uh, this uh, complexity, and I agree, it's not with the ting 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 of the, the your last pictures about the system theory. And uh, <coughs> yeah, is it possible to make a like garden? I hope. I still think it's important to try to make garden. You want me? <laughs> okay. Um, no, I, I think having spent uh, decades, I think, working uh, on description and in the idea that uh, description could uh, get rid of this uh, narrative, uh, of the need uh, of, the, of the narrative, uh, I'm facing uh, now some, some problems. Of course, uh, if you can. Um, get rid of narrative, you get rid of the teleological problem. So you don't need to look for the end. And looking for the end is a, is a very difficult uh, question. So um, together with Bernardo, what I think that we share also with George, it is uh, idea that uh, description should be enough. We, we, don't need, we don't need to have a narrative. But the, the problem is that the narrative is coming back and is uh, opening up, and in, f in fact is creating problems. Uh, Bernardo was dedicated one uh, important book uh, at the middle of the 80s. Uh, it was uh, the, uh, in Italian, uh, Il racconto dell'urbanistica. Uh, Il racconto urbanistico, so. <laughs> so the sort of uh, urbanistic narrative that always needed to have a Saint, Saint George somewhere saving the city and the princess. Of course, the city and the princess were always together, the prize huh, for, for the urbanists. 
always arriving in the moment of danger when the city was uh, suffering. Uh, you know, we know this narrative, we know this story, on which a big part of our work has been constructed on. So the idea of uh, just staying on description, the only thing uh, of which we can really speak, trying to describe. But as I said then, uh, the narrative problem comes back in different forms. And there I go to the playground problem. For example, I, I'm fighting a personal, uh, personal fight uh, against the, the disciplinary society through the playground. The play playground is exactly the space in which uh, a sort of Foucaultian idea uh, of uh, redressing society, redressing people, put people in a good position, their body, their behavior, etc. And the playground is a crucial, it's a crucial point where this disciplinary society is proposed and is uh, imposed, for example, to kids. So my personal battle is that uh, uh, in the case of a new neighborhood where you have thousands of family, you cannot um, evitate some, uh, some, <laughs> some playgrounds. And in general, we try and we spend so much time on, on the small project of the playgrounds that are in fact a point of conflict between a different vision, different uh, ideological uh, vision, different teleology, in fact, about what society should be, how people should stay together, how children should uh, touch or not touch each other, how much risk they can afford. For example, the idea of a, a place without risk. This is completely uh, against uh, a education that is uh, education to be free, education to be able to, to survive, education to, be, to overcome uh, difficulties. So for me, a sort of personal battle, our playgrounds are always very risky. We have always a lot of difficulty to get uh, the kind of, yeah, the, the people arriving and setting the uh, degree of... Uh, um, correctness eh, of the playground. We are always a little bit beyond it. And I have to say, kids like very much our playground. Because exactly they are not disciplined. Or they are the, the less disciplined as possible. And I think this is a crucial point because uh, we can try to work only on description. I, I, I absolutely share, I think, this love for description. But the narratives, ideologies, they are coming back. And in any case, we have to treat them. And uh, the soil as uh, ideology is very interesting because the soil is of course full of it. It's the result uh, of, of that. So in this sense I think it, things are a little bit more complicated. We cannot evacuate certain questions and then we have to find a, a position and interpretation in relation to that. To conclude about uh, the, um, the garden. I think that it's is very interesting because also in my small text I was referring to the three uh, natures and um, it's interesting that modern movement, in fact, uh, just uh, erased the third nature and the second nature. It was mainly in this idea of sort of infinite wilderness, on which, not this green carpet, on which you could put your city. And, and again, things are a little bit more, more complex, and uh, I think that the garden is also a productive place. You didn't mention it, it's a place of meditation, it's a, yes, but it's also a place of production. It's not by chance that the tree life is inside the garden. So the question of the garden also as a productive space, I think is something very, very interesting to, to reflect, for example, on the contemporary space. And maybe we should not forget that the uh, ortus is also a place of production. If, if you agree now, uh, uh, we, I think we can take 45 minutes for lunch uh, after this little discussion. If you don't have something more to add. No, I just want to say that uh, I like your sport. No, sport in, in uh, uh, Antwerp, Antwerpen, for example, the playground, we met there the, the, the ground is uh, sand. 
when we, maybe we should uh, compromise with uh, not changing the, I mean, I am really allergic to the caoutchouc uh, things. No, no because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's full. But you know, Peter Hanke said, on the playground you can't say anything. I mean, it's so desperate, so maybe I, I should take his advice. And the problem uh, with Hunt is uh, also, I said, can we make a garden without God? I said, can we make a public garden, which seems an oxymoron. As you said, it was for happy few. So a public garden, so I'd say it's not possible to make a public garden. And I would like to contra to say yes, it is possible to make a public garden, which is public and which keeps the quality of uh, the narrative in behind. Yeah. I, I would like to add on the playground and the children uh, one uh, element. Um, it is uh, inevitable. I grew up uh, on the river, and from my grandfather, he in, in, in infected me like, uh, with words like, you own the landscape. It's yours. It's yours. He really said that. Look at it, the horizon, the, the meadowland, the cows, it's yours. Go there. He, he even my dad uh, was teaching me to jump over a ditch with a stick, you know, this kind of very... So, but I remember... Uh, as a, as a teenager, I mean, we, and you all remember this, uh, I made love for the first time. Do you understand? This happened. So what, this was of course not at home. It was very risky, I didn't do that. So I took the girl with a boat and sailed her up, up the river from Dordrecht in the, in the marshes, which is about 20 kilometers. I, I hardly believe I did it. I was, I forgot, 15, 16, 17, I forgot, I don't know. And, uh, and, we, we, uh, and of course, I was fooling around because I was pretending I was a good sailor and uh, I could control the tide and uh, she wouldn't get wet. And everything was, of course, a lie. It was not truth. But we made love and we were very wet and there was a lot of rain and I remember, right? Second time, other girl, <laughs> in the dunescape. The Dutch dunescape is a very metaphorical element of the Dutch landscape. It is the only piece uh, which was not made by us. It was done by God. By actually by the Europeans because they threw the sediments in the river and, and they made... No, I don't know. I don't matter. But yeah, Napoleon explained that the Holland is the, 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 the excretion of the, of the empire, which actually is very truth. Um, uh, but in the dunes, there is uh, this very pioneer grass, which is this long and very sharp. It, it can resist all the wind. It grows in salty condition. And it, it, it has many words for in Dutch for this type of grass. And if you make love in the dunes, very relaxing because it is, uh, you know, you can, it's like a bed. And you, you expose to the sun. But this grass is very irritating on your uh, skin. You understand? Because it is... It is it's like like a, like a tattoo, uh, you know. Like you, you, it's, but I remember this. Now, what I want to say is, if today, in the two, because I'm a, I'm Dutch Dutch, I'm wearing wooden shoes. I wake up with herring over my ears like every day, and I love it. I can exp I cannot escape it. But I've now grown ups, so they are a teenager, um, and. And they cannot understand that they make whoopee on the places where I made it, because they cannot get there. If they would be going to the swamp, they would be arrested, because there is a ranger in American um, aluminum vessels uh, with, a, with a green uh, costume, because they are a ranger of wildlife. And in the dunes, you are no longer uh, allowed, because there is a barbed wire, because there's too many uh, idiots going into the dunes. So what I would like to add to this is that we need a bloody playground for us, not for the children, for ourselves. So, and that can only happen if you uh, get rid of uh, legal and engineering uh, 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 nostalgia and introduce a world of narrative and, and use a, uh, introduce a world of poetry. Because that's what people can relate to. Then they finally can say, oh, this must be this. I like it. I, I see this or I see that. So it is for us, for ourselves. I agree completely. It's why I think, yeah, but uh, playground, but 
by the way, playgrounds are not made for children, but for parents to, t to get rid of the children. <laughs> when they go home, they have TV. It's an outside TV, outspace TV for children. But if we, you know, the problem that the profession, the professional, professional, professional of a profession, they are very, they have abandoned this field. It's a, and I think we can uh, go back to your general uh, narrative and to have a playground for ourselves only with resisting when they impose us to, tr to do that. We should say no. I mean, as you said. Because otherwise, we have abandoned this. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of money behind. Let's talk about money. You know, it's very easy. If you want to make a playground with this regulation, you have years of work, sand pits. Oh no, the sand is, uh, yes, there are dogs. No sand, okay. It's a, it's a basic sand. I mean, dunes or in a, even in Aldo Van Eyck style. It's a fantastic play because there is creativity. But now the, the, the municipality people, they take a, a catalog of playgrounds, Brussels regulation authorization. You know, they, if you want to change a, a planche, you have to have the, the right wood with the certification of FFC wood. But they open, they open this, it's made... Uh, yeah? This is all sold by Germans. They are very good in... Uh, uh, in everything. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was very interesting.